have two amazing guests on Lessons Learned today. And for those of you that are new and not sure what Lessons Learned is about, it's kind of in the title. It's a lesson learned. What lesson has life taught you that you feel can be motivational or encouraging to somebody else? Something you've been through and you came out on top of. And then we do a little bit of self-care, self-love segment in the middle because, well, quite frankly, not enough of you love your gosh darn selves. Enough. Um, I know most days I don't, no matter how much I do this segment. A um, couple things I want to remind you guys before I get started. Um, my guests nor myself are professionals, okay? We do not hold therapy diplomas, you know, where we're not. We just don't. We don't have diplomas. We don't have degrees. We don't have nothing in, the, in, in that whole little category, right? But what we do have is life experiences. This is something that my guests have been through that they're willing to share with you. That being said, my guests are making themselves vulnerable to benefit others. So that being said on, you know, I accept zero bullying, zero negative comments, or you are out. You don't get a second chance over here because I have zero time to waste on people who can't respect other people. And that's my boundary, okay? That's what I'm, tell I'm telling you. I will not have it. So if y'all want to stay, don't be negative. And my reds, if you see negative, get them the holy kajibis on out of here because I'm done, right? Um, we will have Brittany, or sorry, I don't know if I should have said that. Lions and tigers next. And then I, I, I am not sure. Is it Nene? Am I saying that right? Or I feel like it's Nia Nia. Nene? Okay, I was like, man, it's got to be Nene. All right, thank you. And I'm actually very, your topic's going to hit me and it's going to hit me like a crap load of bricks because that's kind of related to what I've been talking to this morning. And when I read your thing yesterday, I was like, oh, it'll be great. We're fine. I got this. And then after my topic this morning, I'm feeling hoof because I know it's coming, right? And I know, ugh, ew, you're going to make me get in my feels. And Lions, her, her stories can hit me too because I dealt with a lot of bullying when I was younger too. And I'm dealing with the bullies with my daughter now. So this topic, listen, and, and for those, the one thing I'm going to say before I do my Q&Q &Q and then before I let uh, Lions in the box is parents, your kid can be a jerk. Okay, I don't care how many of you go, my little Johnny and my little Susie would never, ever, ever say anything like that. I'm promising you, your kid's the first one to be a bully. Check your children, y'all. Check your damn children. Because I am tired of these little mouths hurting each other. These seventh, eighth graders coming home crying their eyes out because someone told them to go K-I-L-L -L themselves. Or they make fun of the glasses or the hair color or the clothes or the fact that they, you know, they, they have a different, different feelings than other people, right? Y'all need to teach your children to respect differences. Y'all need to teach your children to respect differences and to understand that the only thing constant in life is change. And your children might understand things a little bit better. Because the only thing that gets my daughter through this bullying is I keep telling her it's going to change. It's going to get better. It's just a phase. Hurt kids, hurt kids, hurt people, hurt people, okay? Bullies suck. Anyways, real quick, y'all. My Q&Q &Q before we get lions in the box is life is what happens to us while we are making other plans. Are you a planner or more of a spontaneous type? Life is what happens to us while we are making other plans. Are you a planner or more of a spontaneous type? Mm-hmm. It's crazy, right? This won't stay up. I'm, I'm, I don't know. I don't, whatever. Both. I think that I, I would say that I'm both as well, but I'm more spontaneous because every time I try to make plans, they get ruined. I can't just, so I have to just be more of like, like, don't get me wrong. My friend's coming in town to visit his brother. So we've been planning this, but what are we doing? I don't know. We might go bowling. We might go fry. We might go out to eat. I don't know. But does it matter if I'm going to get to hang out with the individual? No. You know what I mean? So 
I plan some of it, but I try not to overdo it because then when things don't go the way they're supposed to go, me, the emotional basket case over here, I lose my shenanigans. I almost said a bad word because it's not what I expected, right? So you play an issue in a nice Texas gypsy. I don't have that kind of spontaneous. Uh, I, I, maybe, I don't know. We're, we're planning Greece in July, but that, that's about as spontaneous as I'll get with leaving my country. I got to make sure that, I, you know. <laughs> All right, Lions, are you ready, love? And get you in the box, you guys. Make sure you guys are favorite of my guests. Remember, this is a featured show. I cannot thank you individually for every gift and every favorite. So thank you for the gifts. Thank you for the favorites. But more importantly, thank you for your time. Okay? Um, favorite the guests. If you've got some scarecrows to throw, please do so. Um, and remember, be kind or be gone. Hello. Hi. This is the first time you're in my, you, that you've gotten in my box, huh? Yep. Yeah, I don't. Well, I don't do too many shows, so. Well, I'm really glad that you decided to do this one. I'm thrilled. I know that well, I've, I've known you for a while, and you're a sweet soul. Soul. So. I try. so my my I, question. Uh oh. Okay, I think we're good. So my question is, what is it? What topic are we going to be discussing today, and why? Bullying in school. And why is this topic important? Because I was bullied in school, and I don't think it should happen. My son was also bullied on the bus one time. They tied his shoelaces together. And with that being said, that kid didn't even get in trouble. You know? That part. So, like... It just kills me that these people can bully in school and not get in trouble. But then when you don't do anything wrong, that's when you get into trouble. Does that make sense? Yeah. But you want to know what's crazier than that? Is lions, if you walk up to me and punch me in the face and I defend myself and I hit you back, I get in just as much trouble for defending yep. myself. Yep. That part kills me. Yep. That part literally kills me. Like, I'm just supposed to let them beat the holy gajibis out of me? I'm just right. supposed to stand there and take it to prevent a suspension? No, I get Drives it. Drives me nuts. I'm not going to lie. I told my daughter after this last incident, I said, listen, because this kid that's picking on her comes up to here on her. Okay? He's maybe 80 pounds soaking wet. I told her, blast him in his darn nose. I said, I don't care anymore. I said, I'll take you for ice cream because quite frankly, nobody else does anything about the bullying. The right. school doesn't stop it. The bus drivers don't stop it. And I've been waiting over 48 hours, no, more than that now, to get a phone call from the mother. She can't even do anything about it. So I went over there and I talked to the kids. I said, listen, I said, I'm not going to go to the school with this one. this one. I says, I don't understand why your mom's not calling me back. But that right there is a soul sign, a guaranteed sign that that's half the problem. Mom's never home and it's the siblings raising siblings, right? Mm. So I gave that kid a break on this one and I didn't take it far. But I told him, I says, don't you dare tell my daughter to do that again. I said, because I will take this to the next level at every level and I will make you an example. I said, do yeah. I make myself clear? And like, they just kind of were like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I told them as well. I said, and if you say anything like this again, my daughter will be taken for ice cream when she lays you out on the floor. Yeah. I said, I'm not doing this anymore. I said, you're not going to make threats to my kid or other kids for that matter. Well, so, just like a couple years ago, here's another prime example. Oh, right in the nose, Jenny. I don't care. Two years ago, my son was suspended from school. Okay, these kids have been picking on this group of people all school year long, calling them names, okay? And at the end of the school year, they, the boys finally say something to the girls. And, of course, they weren't white. And the boys got suspended, but they couldn't do anything to the girls. 
So the last two days of school, they were suspended from school. Because the boys, they, but not the girls? Not the girls. See, I, I struggle with how the schools come up with their thing. But then I stop and I look at my son. And, like, my son was, like, bullied, but also a bully. Mm -hmm. Right? And the first time I found out my son was a bully, trust me. That was the last time he bullied, okay? Right. To, to my knowledge anyways. And I tell my daughter, I, you can defend yourself all you want. I says, but if I find out you ever started anything, I said, the next fight you have is going to be with me <laughs> because we're, you're not going to make other people feel bad about themselves. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't believe that enough is, is being done for, for this. Um, things that these kids say as an adult... If I was to say what this kid said to my daughter, I'm facing three years in prison. And if 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 I said to him what he said and he did it, I could get 13 years in prison just for speaking those yeah. words. Yeah. Just for speaking those words. You're looking at 25 to life if you assist. Right. It's insane. It is absolutely crazy that these kids don't realize the amount of trouble that they can get into because these parents don't realize that y'all need to sit your kid down and have the anti-bullying talk. Y'all need to tell your kids to be the one to stand up to the ones being bullied right. because it's not fair. Well, it's and just no. like you. He, he gets picked on all the time at school because he's ADHD. You know, and I'm trying to tell my, my son that, you know, if he sees somebody bullying my nephew, he needs to stick up for him. He has to be the bigger cousin in the scenario. Yeah. You know? My daughter's really good at standing up to the bullies for other kids, just not when they gum at her for herself. She tries to just walk away and ignore it because, so, and here's the thing, y'all. Kids are sensitive as hell. A lot, like, the kids getting bullied... So most of them don't want confrontation. They just want to fit in. They just want to be treated as an equal. They don't even need to be invited to all the fancy stuff. They just don't want to be belittled and berated and made to feel less. Okay? Yeah. And if you can just imagine your child, the person that you love, coming home crying every single day because some other parent can't control their child's mouth i'm sorry but as a parent that is your job and that is your responsibility to make sure it stops yep. because i want y'all to be aware of something else too as a parent if that child does something and catches a charge guess who else gets a charge mom dad you yep it doesn't make sense to how parents can't see that their kids are hurting people and they don't do anything about it. No, I agree. It drives me absolutely insane. My seventh grade year, okay, y'all, I was not even five foot. I was pushing 200 pounds. I had an afro because my mom didn't know how to take care of my curly hair. Okay, I had to get between my teeth. I wore glasses and my my mom dressed me in Walmart clothes and I went to a yuppie school where you were supposed to wear name brands. Okay, there is not a damn thing y'all can say to me on this app as an adult that those kids didn't put me through in middle school. So I know just how mean these kids can be. And that's why I won't tolerate it because I know how it feels and it freaking hurts. When I was in school, I had to wear glasses and people kept calling me four eyes. Yeah, I had that. I'm like, I can't see if I don't have them on. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and the crazy part about stuff like that is if the popular girl came to school with glasses the next day, they'd be cool all of a sudden. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you come to school with glasses and it's, it's you know, Four eyes, bug eyes, you know, miss can't see. Like, oh God, people are just they're kids so are rude. They're and so then rude. and Chad pointed something out yesterday. You know, he said sometimes too, kids will say things because they want so badly to fit in. So they try to fit in with the cool kids. Right, right. Those and kids are also vulnerable. 
to an even more extent because y'all teach your kids don't change who you are be who you are so you, you can find your true friends because one or two real friends is better than a bunch of fake and phonies and this is yeah. what my mom told me too when i come home and sold her they were calling me for eyes she goes it's just because they're not cool like you mm -hmm. you know that's right my that's my thing i tell my and i tell my daughter jealousy is a real thing and if people are jealous of something they're gonna find something and normally what they're picking on you about is something that they're insecure about in themselves mm -hmm. yep okay or they're not happy with their life mm-hmm Yep. You know, like so I said, and I'll say it again, hurt people, hurt people. And these bullied kids, and that's why I gave this one a, ch a chance, okay? It's the first time he did something this drastic, and he's got to be hurting in order to say some crap like that. Yep. Or he's not happy with his lifestyle. Right, but in all, all, all things, I'm hoping that this one move makes him see that the world's not full of anger and hatred and people can be forgiving and understanding. Mm -hmm. And that's my hopes in, in not pursuing this further. But I don't know if he'll get it now. I don't know if he'll get it at any point. I can just hope that he does, you know? Right. You guys are just tuning in. Welcome to Lessons Learned. We've got lions and tigers in the box, and I am still in Lily. And we are talking about bullies and pretty much how there's just not enough done to stop it. I, no matter how many anti-bullying slogans you see going around, I still see bullying everywhere. Everywhere. Even with adults. Even on this app. That's what trolls are. They're bullies. They're adult, grown, miserable, sorry people who can't seem to figure their lives out. So they're going to come and try to tear yours apart. And that, that y'all, not only is it sad, pray for them. Please pray for them because they need it more than anybody else on this app. Because if you're going to come on here and say some of these things as a things grown, as a grown adult, adult, you have got to understand that that person is not happy. They're not here. Right. Period. So pray for these adults that are trolling because they're miserable. They're miserable people, y'all. I'm not going to lie. Hurt people, hurt people. You're miserable. You want to make other people miserable. But I'm sorry. My light, that son of a gun shines bright. And it is bright. And it's almost like y'all can't even, like, no, it's too much. It's too much. But I ain't going to dim who I am. I'm not going to dim myself to match you. <laughs> Crank that up. Let's go. Come shine with me. And that's, yeah. that's you know, I, I don't have time. I, I don't have time for all the negative stuff, you know? Uh, lions. I guess was there was there a point in your life where you realized that you know these bullies are terrible and I can't I cannot let them define who I am was there like a point or a realization in, in your life that made you realize that they're the wrong ones not you I guess maybe when they called me four eyes I just had to realize I was the bigger person and you know, I knew at that time bullying wasn't right. And so I didn't say anything. So I guess just for me to be the bigger person in the whole ordeal and just walk away and just let them talk. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's yeah, hard to do though, right? Like, like it, that's it, hard, to do. Very hard to do, especially as a kid. It is so hard to just ignore and walk away. Yeah. And that's the fact that you learned that at such a young age is amazing. Your parents did well with that, you know, because I struggled and didn't fully understand that till I was in my thirties. Well, and it, it, you know, with me being the oldest, you know, I didn't have an older sibling to stick up for me. You know, I had to stick up for the rest of them. Yeah. That's so. a good big sis. That's a good big sis. Um, let's see. If you could give advice to those being bullied right now, what's the what's best the advice you could give them? I mean, I'd like to tell you just to walk away, but I know that's not the answer to everything. Um, because that could cause more trouble down the road. I guess if you're being bullied, I would tell somebody and hopefully they can take care of it 
as soon as it's done, then it'll stop that. And if not, then maybe try going to hire person in the school's workplace, something, yeah. you know? Yeah. And but, I, I, I'm going to add to that. Guys, remember, we are 100% at surviving our worst days. But also, um, and I give credit where credit's needed, Booyah got on my show, Booyah Boy, for those of you that don't know Booyah Boy. Uh, he was on my show, and he said, because my question was, if you could tell your 18-year-old self or your younger self anything, what would it be? And I want to remind you guys that everything will get better. I can't give everybody detailed advice. I can't promise you things won't be hard because life is hard. But I can promise you that things get better if you keep trying. And if you keep doing the right thing and you are not afraid to be who you are, you will find your people. You will find your, you know, your, your significant other. And, and you will, you, you know, you'll, you'll have the right people because so many people try to kind of sort of change who they are to fit in. You know, once you're bullied, you, you, you have like that automatic, I got a people pleasing. Don't people please ask yourself, do I really like this person enough to make this even a problem? I'm going to guess 90% of the time you're going to go, you know what? I don't think this person's even worth my second thoughts, even though it is going to sit there and you are going to think, and it is going to drive you nuts. You have to admit out loud that some of these people don't even deserve you being upset that they don't like you because they're not a good person. Yep. You know? So, all right, Lions. Um, is there anything that you want to add before I just do a couple questions on, like, you know, when you stream and no, about No, I think that's all that I had to cover today. All right. So when can we find you live? Normally I'm live every day. Okay. Mornings? Um, usually all day long, as long as I'm home. Okay. Not going to your son's football games? <laughs> well, he had a game last night and we won. Go team, go that. team. And um, so, you know, it's getting there. But nice, anyway, nice. the events I have coming up is I'm on window show. On Monday, chopping block. Nice, nice. Oh, that shows, oh, that shows hard. <laughs> that shows it, hard. It is hard, it's but fun, though. You, you know, I come in second place with it one time. Oh, nice. Nice. And then Get I it. filled in last week because filled in for one of the players, and I was the first one voted off, but I didn't know, like, any of the players, you know. Mm -hmm. Of course, they're all going to vote me off to begin with, which is fine. That's that's what stinks, though, is you have to get your own group together, you mm -hmm. know? Ugh. Well, the first time I ever did it was when Emerald had her, Emerald Empress had her family in there. And it come down to me and Emerald. And she beat me in the last to win it, but. <laughs> nice. Nice. So All right, guys. I can do better Monday. Well, I'll try to be there. Remind me Monday, and I'll try to at least pop in for part of it if I can, okay? Um, okay. But you guys, make sure you favorite Lions and Tigers. Thank you so much for doing it. That was a great topic, and I appreciate you being willing to share your story with us. Yep. All right. We'll see you later, honey. Thank you. All right, guys. Welcome to Lessons Learned. I am Silly Lily, and if you just miss Lions and Tigers, we were just talking about bullying. Um, I had a lot to say on that, too. Um just because I've been bullied, my daughter's being bullied, and I know people that have been bullied. Um, and I think the one thing that stands out the most for me, I never bullied, and I stood up to some. But you want to know what I remember more than that? <laughs> the times I didn't stand up. The times I didn't defend somebody getting bullied because I didn't want to get put in the middle of it because I was scared to make be made a victim also. And I'm going to tell you right now, I regret that. I, uh, I lost a friend because of bullying. Um, she finally came out as herself and we lost her because people couldn't accept her.
and I didn't stand up for her a few times. And I regret that. So if y'all's children's has any little bit of soul or you have a little bit of soul, make sure they understand how important it is to stand up to somebody because nobody deserves that. Nobody, guys. There is not a soul on this earth that deserves to be put down because they are who they are, because they wear glasses, because they don't fit the size or shape that you think a person should be. Okay, but let me tell you something. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, okay? And not every not everybody wants the same thing. Different people find different things beautiful, and that's why I say you have to be who you are to find your people and especially your person. Because if you're trying to fit into somebody else's mold, right? Like if you don't, like, like I, I, I'm not a, a teeny tiny little thing. I like my food, right? But I went through phases where I tried to be skinny and I'd go anorexic and I wouldn't eat and I'd throw up what I ate and I did all kinds of things to try to be skinny and I was godforsaken miserable, miserable. But now I'm just whatever and I'm okay with it, right? I don't care what you think about my size. Do I like it every day? No, I'm a woman. I don't like anything about me most days, okay? But realistically, I'm okay. So if you don't like it, don't look. Don't look. It's that easy. So that was my, my kind of my little intro into what's next, and that's that self-care, self-love thing that we do every week. Um, we will have our next guest in the box in about six minutes, okay? Maybe a little less, maybe five um, God, I have got, I have got so much going on in my brain. <sighs> I don't even know where to go, what to start with. And I know we got this whole new moon, new stuff going on, but it's very overwhelming. Very, very overwhelming. Self-care tip number one, drink your water, drink plenty of water. Believe it or not, waking up and chugging eight ounces of water will give you more energy than six cups of coffee. Call me crazy, but try it. At least drink the water before your coffee and you'll feel better. I'm not kidding. Y'all don't believe me. Y'all think I'm full of crap. If y'all wake up and start your day and end your day, not only are you doing your, your, your insides a favor because you're helping wash stuff out, the toxins and stuff, by drinking... Look, you just... Half of this before bed and the other half when I wake up or about-ish, right? Every single day. I got my coffee too, but I'm on my second thing of water already, you know? That was a full cup today, okay? And it's gone. Trust me, I drink my coffee too with way too much sugary creamer. And here, the water, yeah, it's half gone already because I drink it. Throughout, I just, I got, y'all, I constantly am drinking water. But I made the mistake, God, I can't wait for that to wash out, of adding a strawberry, like a flavor pack to this. And so now I just get that light strawberry lemonade, like taste and everything. And I just want water, but I just get this little hint. Self-care tip number two. Read a book. Put your phone down, read a book. If you don't know how to read, which I'm going to call BS because you're here, put on a good movie, put your phone down, turn it off, and allow yourself to just focus on anything but technology and stuff, you know? Get lost in a good book. Get lost in a good movie. Read a book on the tablet. Do one of your audio books while you're driving. I don't know, but... I find when I when I will do grab a good book, it's easy to get lost in it. You know, the phone books, yeah, but I wouldn't rem I wouldn't read that. Um, and that kind of goes into this next one. Enjoy your silence and your stillness. You need to take take time to simply be present. Um, in your silence, you can enjoy coffee. You know, before the family wakes up, even you know you can. Make sure that you're taking time for yourself, quiet time, just you and your brain. Some call it meditation. I call it, I don't know. Like 
I don't necessarily find peace by sitting in the silence. I find my peace by walking in nature, by getting out and, and, and not playing music when I'm out there, but just listening to the birds chirp, finding a body of water so I can hear it flow, right? Um, crickets are chirping, birds are chirping, you know, whatever other animals, squirrels you can hear running and climbing up the trees. You know what I mean? You, there are so many sounds that if you just sit down or you just walk around silently that you can hear. You know what I mean? Um, Blue, we can talk about that after the featured show, but quite honestly, the fact that they are giving students tablets and expecting me as a parent to pay for it is ridiculous. It should be included in the school fees that are already way too freaking high because we already have to pay for these books that they don't use, right? Like I, they're making me buy books that you write in and half of them aren't even halfway filled out. So if you're doing 90% of the stuff on the tablets, why are you making me buy the book? And now if they break the tablet, I have to pay for the tablet. So what happened to paper? I understand we're trying to save trees and stuff, but like you cannot force me to, yeah, that's a topic for a whole other day. You, 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 I feel like kids learn better with hands-on, right? Kids learn better with hands-on. At least my kids and I do. Um, but that, like I said, that can be, if you, if you want to make that a topic for another day, um, we do have some topic, topic, uh, topic morning streams, um, throughout the week that we're going to be posting. So we can definitely make that a topic. Uh, y'all remember that. So when I'm going, what topic are we going to discuss? Um, y'all make sure blue hit me with the fade. You can come back and uh, do that. All right. So we got one minute. So I'm going to ask you guys a couple of quick questions and we're going to get her in the box. Okay. Self-care question. Number one. How do you feel at this moment? Like sitting here right now, how do you feel? I feel a lot more relaxed now that I've gotten a lot off my chest today and that I've shared some of these hard things that I've been going through and these feelings I've been having. Pretty decent euphoric, okay, chill. Yeah. Um, do you guys follow the advice you give to others? I don't always. If only, right? And my last question to you guys. Is there any negativity you can cut out of your life? And before you say no, think people, places, and things. My bills, I'm telling y'all. Anybody else stuck in the hood? Y'all stuck in the hood? I'm stuck in the damn hood. It's a trap. You can't get out. Adulthood is real, y'all. Real. <laughs> All right, guys. You guys ready to introduce our next guest? Nene, you ready? Here we go. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for being willing to be on my show. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I think I lightweight procrastinated a few extra seconds because I know this is about to hit me like a ton of bricks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just over here thinking I'm like lessons learned. Oh my gosh. I only got 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got to, you got till 11. I don't really have a, like, we have like, a we can go a little after for the closing stuff. That's fine. So you've got you. Okay. We can go after too. My last week, he stayed in the box for what three hours after the show. Oh, wow! Yeah. Wow! <laughs> yes. Lessons learned. I love that. That's a beautiful topic because sometimes those lessons are the hard ones. Um, learning to put yourself first shouldn't be hard, but with all of us, we all are our toughest critics. So when I think of lessons learned, I have to understand that first and foremost, I have to love myself. Um, without self-love, we get caught up in how we want others to treat us without realizing we are the first example for that. Um, 
um, I think one of my biggest lessons learned was you can't change a person. And in my mind, I'm over here like, okay, I'm not trying to change anyone. I just know I have so much love to give that my love is going to make them want to be a better person. My love is going to make them want to see what is it that, you know, how is, what is this lifestyle, you know, she has, you know, how is she like this? I'm not trying to change anybody in my mind, but my ego is really like, yeah. You're trying to change them because they're yeah. some shit. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry, I'm about to say that. <laughs> okay, <it's okay. laughs> um, I let one slip out once in a while too. It's okay. Um, but yeah, so I think today I wanted to share my life lesson of um, self love, self care, and self development from the tough lessons in life. Some of the toughest lessons, me going through a divorce, put me on a spiritual path of me working on myself. So I was going through, um, my parents had a very beautiful long marriage. And as an adult kid, when they chose to divorce, I, I had no idea that that was the first time in my life. Well, not, not the first time, but that was the first time I, I thought about therapy. I didn't get it just yet, but I loved the idea of marriage and my parents were such an example for that, that when I got married, I told myself and I embedded in my head, you can never get married because you don't want to end up divorced. And that D word divorce scared the crap out of me so much that it, it, it made me stay longer in a toxic situation than I should have. So, getting on this spiritual path and journey and saying, Hey, I'm not liking this. I'm feeling stuck in a rut. Something's got to change. It was like little things or, you know, my ancestors or my spirit guides, God was saying you, something's got to change. Something's got to change. Look at how they're acting. You, but, 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 but you, <laughs> you, I had to change. <laughs> Because once I realized I had the personal power in my life on what was going on, I had to start removing people yeah. and places and things out of my life so that I could move forward. So that one was one of the hardest lessons, but it made me realize that I had to focus on myself. Yeah. And I'm like, what? But, 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 but. It's like we want to make excuses, but at the end of the day, we have to work on ourselves and be the change we wish to see. Now, it's not easy. No one said it would be easy, but it is worth it because no one is you and that is your power. No one is you and that is your power. So removing myself from that situation made me realize, you know what? You can't force anyone to make the same choices or the same decisions that you're making, but you can make those decisions and hard choices for yourself. And once I started learning different healing modalities, I feel like I started going forward in the path of letting go. My mom, my mom passed away December 12, 2020. And that was one of the hardest lessons in life. One, because no one ever thinks that their parents are going to pass away, regardless of if it's from old age, whatever the case may be. My mom had colon cancer, but she hid it. My mom was the earth angel that everyone would go to with their problems. Mm -hmm. And she contained it well, but she contained it in her vessel. She contained it in her human body. And it came in the form of dis-ease. It came in the form of cancer. She couldn't help everyone, but she did. And it costed her because she had to take care of herself. So the lesson that I learned from my mom having cancer was she's an adult. Everyone had an idea of what they wanted her to do to heal. Get radiation, do chemotherapy, do um, you know reflexology, do acupuncture, all these different things but she had to do what she wanted to do. And I'm telling you, 
you gotta give permission. You gotta let people, cause you can't give anybody permission to be themselves. You have to let people be themselves. Yeah. And then if you see them for who they truly are, you have to let them be and love them for who they are, or you have to let them go and love them for who they are. But you don't always have to have people around you that are hurting you or causing you harm. And that's a hard decision for yourself. Everyone loves to hold on to the term family. Everyone loves to hold on to the term friends. But if they're not acting like family, if they're not being a friend, space is required. Action. Actions speak louder than words. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. A hundred percent. I don't care how much you tell me you love me or how much you tell me you're going to be there when you need me. If you're not there when I need you, you don't love me. Yeah. You're lying to my face. Yeah. And y'all need to realize when people are saying things and doing things and then they're not following through with it, you deserve better. Exactly. Much. But losing someone in that human form it's hard. It's hard. is the hardest lesson learned because you can't change. <laughs> you can't bring them back. <laughs> right. Well, the, the one thing that was said to me is, for one, you treat others how you want to be treated. Yeah. But when it comes to, to, to dealing with people, if you don't, like if you're, if you're a parent, okay, or if you're an older sibling, and you love more than anything else in the world, one of your, you know, your children, your siblings, whatever, and you see them getting treated poorly, are you going to just sit back and watch that? Or are you going to stop it? And you have to think if you don't want to see someone else treated that way, why are you letting someone treat you that way? Right? Yeah. There was an incident in seventh grade. Um, just because, you know, you mentioned the bullying. I witnessed a bullying session in seventh grade. And I think I watched for a while and then I walked away and then I saw the girl later on that day and I apologized to her. And I said, you know, I'm sorry I didn't say anything in that moment because what they were doing was wrong. And I told her if anything like that ever happens again and I'm there, I will stand up for you because you didn't deserve that. And sometimes you think, oh, well, I didn't bully her. I didn't say anything. I, I, it wasn't my business, so I didn't stop it. And yeah, everyone has that right. But my intuition, my instinct said I should have said something. And so going forward, after any scenario, I'm going to say something. And so it, it's, you know, walking away you know, to calm myself down, because I'm a fire sign. So who knows? I mean, it could have been, it could have, who knows if they would have said something to me, it could have been a whole fight. Maybe it was just not the right time for me to intervene. But going forward after that, it made me realize, you know what? I got to do better because some people don't have a voice. Some people are going through something in their home that we could never imagine. No. And some people, especially the bullies, may be going through stuff in their home that's making them act out like that. That's why I feel like all these things are so essential because at the end of the day, we're trying to find a solution. Yeah, yeah sometimes it's, it's important to walk away and sometimes it's important to say this needs to stop and uh and move from that absolutely absolutely oh god the feels guys the feels today <laughs> if you guys are just tuning in i'm silly lily this is nene and you're watching lessons learned um we are, are talking about i guess releasing negative people mm -hmm. places and things from our lives so that we can grow into who we're supposed to be um I guess treating people how we want to be treated can go along with this right now too. Um, and, yeah. and, and, and even into the bullying part, we're still caring from our first guest lions. We talked about bullying and that's part of this too, because so much of the, the negative behavior and, and the releasing is people who, who don't, don't, don't make you and push you to be better. The way I look at it is if they're not celebrating with me for my steps and my milestones, 
why do I care about theirs? You know what I mean? If they do them, I'll do me. But I need people by my side that if I'm up here, they're going to celebrate. And then when they come up here, I'm going to celebrate with them. Like, let's go. And then maybe I'll be back up here. And then, But then they're going to be like, yes, come on. We got this. Look at us go. Look, look, look. Right? <laughs> but yeah. I got those family members I had to let go because it doesn't matter how good I did or how much I got improved or what. It didn't matter. It was never going to be enough. I was never going to be enough for them. It doesn't matter what I did, what college I could go to, what degree I got, I will never be enough for them. <laughs> Add realization, I don't care. Right, <laughs> like, you're I don't care. You. I, you're, you don't pay my bills. You're not sleeping in my bed. You're not helping me take care of my kids. You literally have nothing to do with my life. So right. why do I care? And you're my past my parents. <laughs> That's why I don't care anymore. You know yeah. what I mean? If I'm never going to be enough, why do I fight and try so hard? So I Definitely. stopped going to family dinners. I stopped going, you know what I mean? I, and I, I cut 90% of my family out because they can't just be happy. what you're with doing and how you're doing now. You had to make that decision for you. And now you're thriving. You're moving forward. You're loving yourself. You're doing all the necessary precautions to remind yourself, I'm not who you think I am. I am who I am. Period. Yeah. It's hard, guys. I still cry a lot, though. I'm not cutting, cutting people out that you love is hard. But you can't find the people who are going to love you back if you keep loving the wrong people. Exactly. You're stuck. So it's got to hurt before it gets better. And it's been a roller coaster of a journey. But yeah. I've got my own business. I'm getting a second job because being a single mom is hard. Um, I've, 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 I've got, I'm on the top edge. I have a featured show and I have made so many amazing friends since I've just done me and it yeah. feels good. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. You know, right. I still have growth to do, but it's me. It's not them. It's me. Right. You know, and oh, feels ill guys. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> ew. Oh, I don't like this. Um, so I guess I don't know what 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 else can we can we add to that? I think you you hit that pretty pretty hard pretty good. <sighs> you got my I'm like you guys can see him right? You guys see the wheels turning right? Like, <laughs> I, I yeah. Is there anything else that you wanted to add to that that I, I can't even come up with questions because as I was coming up with them, you were kind of answering them. I think as we continue to work on ourselves. Navigate this world, and we see that things aren't serving our highest good, it's important to let them go. Because when they're serving our highest good, we know we feel good, we're learning. You know, these lessons make us uncomfortable, but you can't say you're strong without going through things. Yeah. You can't have experience without actually doing it. Mm -hmm. So we've already made it past that. We're still here you're still here. So that means there's more things that you can manifest and create in your life. But knowing the po personal power that you have and removing those things that aren't serving your highest good and having faith in the higher power, the universe allowing you, allowing you to move about, I'm telling you, it's no greater feeling than to know, you know what, I'm in control of this right now. Mm -hmm. And even though there, there's so much craziness going on in the world, you're in control of you. You can actually control your feelings. You can actually master yourself. And that's important because when you have all that power and all that energy being redirected instead of into people that don't care about you, taking back and reclaiming that power, you're able to glow in a different light because there's nobody out there dimming you and electing, you know, taking that energy from you. I mean, of course, your kids are going to have to. You're, you're like, you know what? I signed up for that. Come on, babies. Let's do this. I'm going to help you. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to continue to teach you and love you. Yes. Um, but yeah, other people outside of that, you can cut off. You can let go. A job not serving your highest good, not trying to pay you what you're worth. There have been a few times when I was like, you know what? This is not it. And I said something and they were like, look, how can we make it it? Because we don't want you to go. 
And so it's either, it's like, you have to stand up for yourself. You have to, yeah. you have to say like no person, place or thing can overcome me or have control over me and move like that. Then that negative energy that people are throwing at you, 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 you get to the point where you can't hear it. Yeah, you can hear it and it hurts. But once you build that wall of protection over your mind, body and spirit, they can say what they want to say because it doesn't change who you are and it never will because you have reclaimed your personal power. So it's essential that we take those lessons and we apply them to our life and we say, you know what? Not my monkeys, not my circus. I'm going to keep it moving. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, in, for me, anyways, you guys, that what she just said was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Mm -hmm. It was harder than being a mom. It's harder than being bullied. It was harder than anything I've ever tried in my life. Because you have to face the realities that you haven't set boundaries, that you've allowed yourself to get walked on. You've allowed yourself to be manipulated. You've allowed yourself to be taken advantage of because you didn't say no. And the one thing that I had to realize is that the only thing that I can control in every situation is my reaction to the situation. And that is what defines you as a person. It is not what happened to you. It is how you react and learn from it. We all make mistakes. As you guys know, I found myself behind the wheel of a car, got myself in a lot of trouble. But you know what? I learned from it. Yeah. And it changed who I was, but that was like my rock bottom in life, right? That was my like, Same. look, lady, you got to stop and you best find yourself before you literally hurt yourself for someone else because you're an idiot. You're being an ever loving idiot because you don't believe in yourself. Right. And I consumed my feelings that way. You know what I mean? I drank them away or whatever I was doing back then. You know what I mean? But when I woke up in a hospital bed and it was my fault, Y'all, that was my rock bottom. And I pray that y'all can find yourselves before you hit your rock bottom like that, right. because that ain't no fun. And it is way easier to just say, you know what? I can't be like this. I don't like this. This is not who I'm meant to be. It's way easier than hitting your rock bottom. And that's what right. I'm trying to teach my daughter. But my son don't get it. He's going to have to hit his rock bottom long and hard. And he's, he's, he's going to fall further than I did because he just don't listen, you know? But we, we've yeah. got to understand that, you know, it's our reactions is about the only thing we can control other than setting boundaries and not letting people take advantage of us. Right. And we all have boundaries. the ability to do that. Boundaries are essential. Yeah. And they're hard too, but you deserve that. At the end of the day, it's like, what do I deserve? I deserve the best. So yeah. how do I do that? By learning to say no. Do I have to say no all the time? No. Right. But you have to know when to say it. Yes. Yeah. You have to know when you're comfortable, you know, like if you want to go out of your boundary, you know, it's, it's gotta be, you know, like my kids. Okay. Yeah. They push the boundaries. They test the limits, you know, mm -hmm. but that's different. They're trying to find themselves too. Um, my kids are going to get away with a lot more testing and pushing than an adult, because I'm sorry, as an adult, you sure already have your stuff figured out. I should not be having to figure it out for you. Right. You know what I mean? That is not my job to help you grow up. When you grow up, you come back. When you figured it out, will I, will I be by your side? Will I help you? Yes. Will I do it for you? No. 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 All right. When can we find you live? Tell us a little bit about you and what we find in your lives. And if you have any other events coming up. God. Yes. That's a good uh, one. I'm, I'm, I'm working my get back on a consistent schedule when i go live i'm doing um cooking shows i'm doing cocktail of the week mm -hmm. i am doing readings for my guests i'm doing uh fashion shows for some cute new outfits for the season mm -hmm. i like to really have fun we do thankful thursday in honor of my mom and memory of my mom and my brother where we you know we kind of talk I'm not a licensed professional, but I do have an in memory of support group um, in honor of my angels, just so we can know that we're still here, we're still loved, and you are not alone. Um, 
on IG, you can find me at Queen DJ 444 and you can also fave me here and um, get an alert when I go live. So thank you so much for having me. I love this lesson learned and I'll definitely come and check you out again. Yes, Nene, thank you. I've got you faved, I think from were you, were you, uh, Uma, Uma B, were you, were you versing yes. her? I think I've got you favorited from when you were versing her uh, earlier in the week. Um, but I'll definitely be stopping by your stream. If you guys haven't faved Nene already, please do so. And if you missed today's lessons, uh, Nene talked about letting go of things that don't serve you, um, things that aren't good for you. Um, anti-bullying, I mean, we had anti-bullying with lions and tigers <laughs> and over here. Today hit, today hit hard, y'all. Like, put a one in the comments if this is, like, literally one of the hardest-hitting shows I've had in a while. You know what I mean? Like, it all hit, and it hit in the feels really hard, you know? So, Nene, thank you so much for being on here, and, and you know, again, yeah. lions as well, making yourselves vulnerable, it's hard, ladies. Thank so you, lions. We appreciate you guys so very, very much, and uh, I look forward to having you back on the show maybe one day, right? Absolutely. I feel like you've got more to share and, and you, 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 <laughs> you're, you're smooth with it. So yeah, we're going to get you back. <laughs> thank you. Nene, Bye. thank you so much. I'll let you go. Y'all, I'm going to get Jay in the box. We're going to do the closing. Um, and guys, uh, truly we'll get the special shout out flyer for the highest gifter of the show. Thank you for the crystal flower. <sighs> All right, let me change my picture because we're not featured anymore. I'm going to take this goofy old lady top off. <laughs> Whatever, it matched the, the eye, eye stuff, right? Oh my, I got to change my picture. I'm getting there. Oh, God, we should, we should, y'all, we. Oh, I didn't do the cute and cute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, oh, any, meeny, miny, mo. That one doesn't work for me. Okay. Li we're not going to answer this now. We answer this at the beginning of next week. Living well is the best revenge. To you, what one thing would mean living well? I already know my answer to that. You know? All right. So let's put all the rest of these away.